Greetings Earthlings, welcome back to the bench. Like I said before, I was going to re-power test some of these amplifier boards because I have a better power supply to properly measure them. Or at least get more relevant measurements at voltages I want to measure them at. Since I was not able to do that before. <laughs> Okay, this is a TDA 7492 board, 2 by 50 watts per channel. Not. But it, it's a pretty good board. It should be able, be able to deliver some decent amount of power. And I will try various uh, voltages. But right now I have the 4 ohm loads connected. Like I always say, both channels driven maximum power before clipping. So it's got to be clean power, none of this clipping 10% distortion rubbish. And I like to keep it well below 1% as a matter of fact. So I will proceed to test this chip amp, class D chip amp board, and see how it does okay guys we'll measure it at 18 volts 4 ohm loads here we go now, it's hard to tell where clipping is so I'll use the spectrum analyzer you can see the the blue line there and get rid of those high peaks right about there so we're getting 10 volts RMS it's drawing about 1.7 1.7 1 well I don't even need a calculator for that because 10 squared is 100 divide that by 4 ohms 25 watts so this thing can deliver some decent power. Okay, we'll look at the distortion here. Again, this is 4 ohm loads. I'm measuring that at 15 volts supply. Now this is my built-in 1% pilot signal I use as a reference. And um, if I go into clipping, of course you'll get the harmonics. There'll be odd harmonics. I can tune that out. And you can see this amplifier is not too bad. So this is probably a little below 0.5%. Okay, let's get some 8 ohm measurements. I've hooked up the 8 ohm loads to the output. And I will proceed on getting some power measurements with the 8 ohm loads. Okay, 8 ohm loads running at 24 volts, 15.6. So what did we get here? 15.6 squared, divide that by 8. 30.4 watts. Wow, this thing can deliver 30.4 watts of clean power. Okay, here are the power results. From the TDA 7492. First at 4 ohms with 9 volt supply we got 6.2 watts of clean power per channel. This column here is the current that was drawn off the power supply. I have to remember to double the number that's red because the channels are paralleled so it drew 1.6 amps. And I won't mention that for every entry here. So at 12.6 volts, at 14.2 watts, 15 volts, 19.4 watts, 18 volts, again we got 25 watts, and at 20 volts, 28.6 watts, and it was drawing 3.6 amps. Now, this is pushing the limit right here. I would not use this voltage at 4 ohm loads 
18 volts is as high as I would go because I'm starting to see the effects that it's probably starting to hit current limit at 20 volts. Okay, so then I did some 8 ohm load measurements at 9 volts. I got 4.1 watts, 12.6 volts. I got 8 watts, 15 volts, 11.5 watts. And with 8 ohm loads, I can use the higher voltages because the current draw is not as severe as with 4 ohm loads. So at 20 volts, I got 21.1 watts. At 24 volts, again, we got 30.4 watts of clean power per channel. And it was drawing 3 amps. You see, with 4 ohm loads at 24 volts, I was getting less power, but the it was demanding more current from the power supply. So you can see using 8 ohms is less of a stress on the amplifier and you can get more power but use higher voltage. So there you go. That is the TDA 7492. I did do a full review on this before but again back then I didn't have a good power supply to get all these measurements with. The one issue I recall having was it did have a little bit of background hiss, which is pretty common with these Class D boards, I see. I know you can uh, hack them and change resistors to vary the gain, but most people that buy these things don't want to mess around with surface mount resistors and such. But there is that option. But if you do reduce gain, you may not be able to drive it to its full capability with a headphone output device like a music player or an iPhone or whatever. But there you have it. There's the TDA 7492 Class D Amp Board Power Test. Thanks for watching.